This time they sent up a maid, who, being good-natured and unused to the ways of the palace, made the best haste she could to the attic, whence presently she returned with the terrible news. The servants, who had gone back to their game, now dropped their cards and came running. All the household, in fact, came pouring up the turret stairs. The palace doctors themselves coming together in such numbers that the poor Princess Aurora had little room to breathe, if she indeed was still breathing. The doctors dashed water on her face, unlaced her, slapped her hands, tickled the soles of her feet, burned feathers under her nose, rubbed her temples with special oils, but nothing would bring her to. Meanwhile, a messenger had ridden off with the tidings, and while the doctors were still shaking their heads, the king himself came galloping home to the palace. In the midst of his grief, he remembered what the fairies had foretold, and being persuaded that, since they had said it, this was fated to happen, he blamed no one. Instead, he gave orders to carry the princess to the finest apartment in the palace, and there lay her on a bed that was covered in gold and silver 